There's a key question that has been asked since antiquity. It is a question most every person who has ever lived has grappled with. Does God exist? In the 13th century, Thomas Aquinas, a Dominican monk, became one of the greatest philosophers and theologians that has ever lived. He wrote an enormous amount of literature. One of his most famous works is Summa Theologica. In this work, Thomas Aquinas asserted that there are five ways to prove the existence of God. He starts with what can be commonly observed through the senses and proposes these observations prove that God exists. But why do we care in this modern era? Do his assertions stand up today given our scientific advancements? Let's take a look at his five ways and find out. The first proof of God's existence is observed through motion. In this world, we see that whatever moves has been moved by something else. According to Aquinas, the moving object has been put in motion by a first mover. It is impossible for an object to move itself, and therefore, there must be a first mover. Every day, we observe movement. When you see a rolling ball or a rock that has fallen off a cliff, you know that something caused the movement of these items. The ball did not move itself. The rock did not decide to fall off the cliff. Something caused the movement of these items. The world we live in is moving, and Aquinas argues that this movement begins with God. He is the first mover who is not moved by anything else and put all things into motion. The second proof for God's existence stems from the observation that everything has a cause. It can be proven that nothing can happen without a cause, but what does cause mean? A cause is an action that produces a result. The wings of a bird must move to cause it to fly. The driver of a car must push the gas pedal for the car to accelerate. Each of us must breathe air if we hope to continue living. Nothing can cause itself because to be its own cause, it would have to have existed prior to itself. Even the beginning of this earth must have had a cause in order to exist. Even if you believe in evolution, the Big Bang Theory, it is necessary to admit a first cause. The first cause must be given the name God. Aquinas' third proof is an argument of possibility and necessity. This means that we find in nature things that have a possibility of existing or not existing. Things that have the possibility of not existing will at some point stop existing. But there was never a time when nothing existed. Otherwise, there would be no prime being to cause the existence of our world. So, who came first, the chicken? Or the egg? The answer is neither. God was first. Aquinas is saying that everything in the universe attributes its existence to a necessary being who is God. And God, who is necessary in himself, does not find necessity in any other being. God has always existed, and our world finds necessity in his existence. The fourth proof comes from the observation that things are more or less true, good, or noble. We all make observations in everyday life that things are more or less of something. We can all observe what we agree is good no matter what our religious beliefs. Helping an orphan who has no parent or way to care for themselves is always considered good. Helping someone who is poor, crippled, and starving is universally considered good. Consider even Gandhi or Mother Teresa. They're certainly considered good. If someone hurts someone weaker than themselves, that is considered less good and it might even be called bad. An example of something else we all consider as more or less of something is heat. We call a fire hot. If you run a bath for young children, it is considered warm or less hot. In the summer, we might, might want a cold lemonade, which is even less hot. Whether good or hot, something must be the best or most good for us to compare everything else that is more or less good. Something must be the hottest in order to compare something else that is more or less hot. Therefore, there must be something that causes goodness and establish perfection. This is what we call God. The fifth proof of God's existence is seen in the way our natural world is governed. We see things that lack intelligence, such as a tree or the sun or moon, act in purposeful ways. The trees grow up and make leaves and produce fruit seasonably. The sun and moon always act in a timely manner. The earth has its times, days, and nights, which never change. These things do not achieve these goals by chance, but by intention. Aquinas argues that whatever lacks awareness cannot achieve a goal unless directed by something with awareness or intelligence. If you believe that by evolution the world was made, something must have initiated that development and ordering of evolution. It could not have been by chance. When we see a computer, we know that a designer created that computer. 
In the same way, when we see the intricate, orderly world that we live in, we know there must be a designer. Aquinas says this designer is God, who directs all things to their purposes. Well, Thomas Aquinas was one smart man who developed some fantastic arguments for the existence of God. He was one of the greatest minds of his time, but do his arguments have any relevance today? I mean, if Thomas Aquinas was alive today, he would be over 700 years old. Is what he has to say even relevant to us? After all, we live in a world of enlightenment. We live in a postmodern world where our personal experience defines what we believe and who we are. We know things now that this old guy would never even have imagined. But the thing is, is that all five ways to prove the existence of God stem from our personal experience. They stem from our senses. Each of us can see that things move around us. Each of us can see and sense that everything that happens must have a cause. Each of us can personally experience that things exist, things are hot or cold, and that even mindless things like trees act in a certain way. Our senses and observations of the way things work in our universe haven't changed in 700 years or 3,000 years. The five ways to prove God exists have particular application to us in our world where our personal experiences define our beliefs. What do you think about the five ways that prove that God exists? What do you believe about the existence of God?